Hi, I'm Dr. John Goldblum. I'm chairman of the Department of Pathology at Cleveland Clinic, and I'm one of the uh, soft tissue pathologists. Today, I wanted to uh, go over a series of cases, actually three cases, to discuss what is clearly our most common consult to our soft tissue pathology service, and that is the problem of well-differentiated lipomatous tumors. It's a very common problem seen by all surgical pathologists, and I sort of just want to give an overview uh, of our approach to these lesions using these three specific cases. So I'll start with the first case, uh, which is seen here. This comes from a 49-year-old male who had an upper back mass, and you can see that the lesion is very well circumscribed. Um, sometimes these lesions are shelled out, and you don't know whether they're superficial or deeply located or not. So one of the things we always do is look up the MRI and uh, determine whether it's a subcutaneous or deep soft tissue mass. In this case, it's a subcutaneous mass. Um, when we go to higher magnification, there's really two things that you can tell. You can tell that there's fat, and you can tell that there are these enlarged hyperchromatic nuclei. Um, so at this point, there's really only two things this lesion could be. It's either a pleomorphic lipoma or a well-differentiated liposarcoma, also known as an atypical lipomatous tumor. Here you can see that there are some uh, multinucleated sort of florette-like giant cells, and I think most pathologists associate these kinds of cells with pleomorphic lipomas, and they're certainly very, char very characteristic of pleomorphic lipomas, um, but I just want to emphasize that they're not absolutely pathognomonic of that lesion. You can see them in other well-differentiated fatty tumors. As I move around the slide, one of the things I'm looking for to determine if this could represent a pleomorphic lipoma are a dense ropey collagen bundles, which you're seeing here. So these are eosinophilic collagen bundles. You can even maybe make out some mast cells, which are another characteristic lesion, uh, a feature of this lesion, excuse me. So this is a pleomorphic lipoma by virtue of the fact that it's superficially located. It's got atypical cells which are really no different than the atypical cells that one sees in a well-differentiated liposarcoma. Uh, but in addition, it's got these florette-like giant cells, it's got mast cells, it's got ropey collagen, uh, and the clinical pathologic setting is really entirely consistent with a pleomorphic lipoma. As most people know, these lesions stain strongly for CD34. In this case, was strongly CD34 positive. I don't find that to be particularly helpful since atypical lipomatous tumor slash well diff liposarcomas also stain for CD34. There's actually a much, much better test that one can do um, to distinguish pleomorphic lipoma from well differentiated liposarcoma. This is the second case which comes from a deep soft tissue mass specifically from the thigh of a, I believe it was a 65 year old female. And one thing that's worrisome is number one that this is deep to the fascia. Uh, I've never made a diagnosis of pleomorphic lipoma deep to the fascia. Number two, even at low magnification, one can see an admixture of mature fat in this pink fibrous material which separates the tumor into distinct lobules. And even at this low magnification, one can see these atypical hyperchromatic nuclei which are indicative that one is uh, dealing with a well-differentiated liposarcoma, again, a synonym for an atypical lipomatous tumor. Notice that I have not even mentioned the word lipoblast. I don't look for lipoblasts ever in a well-differentiated fatty tumor. Uh, they're not necessary for the diagnosis and they're too subject to inter-observer uh, variability. So they're re not really a reliable feature in distinguishing uh, atypical lipomatous tumor from any other uh, lipomatous neoplasm. This is just a uh, higher magnification view of these enlarged hyperchromatic nuclei, indicative that this is a well-differentiated liposarcoma. This is the final case that I wanted to bring this discussion uh, to a close with. Um, this is a large retroperitoneal mass from an elder, elderly patient. And the case was sent to us because there was this large tumor uh, which caught the patient's, the pathologist's eye, excuse me, and at higher magnification, uh, one can see it's a very cellular spindle cell neoplasm arranged into fascicles. And this was sent with a large number of immunohistochemical stains with the question of what is this spindle cell sarcoma? We're having trouble naming it. Given that this was in the retroperitoneum, I was immediately suspicious that I didn't really care what kind of spindle cell sarcoma this was because I'm always concerned that that's a dedifferentiated component of a dedifferentiated liposarcoma. So what I always do is go to the periphery of that uh, tumor and look out here to see if I can identify a well-differentiated liposarcomatous component. If you look at this portion of the tumor, you can see these enlarged hyperchromatic nuclei uh, and fat, which again is indicative that this lesion is arising from a well-differentiated liposarcoma. Uh, then as you can see here, there's a little bit of non-neoplastic adrenal gland. And then as I move the slide over, you can see this high-grade spindle cell sarcoma. 
So to a large degree, it really doesn't matter what this spindle cell sarcoma is because it's arising in the setting of a well-differentiated liposarcoma. When we put these all together, we can refer to this as a de-differentiated liposarcoma. And by far, the most common retroperitoneal sarcoma is the family of well-differentiated and de-differentiated liposarcomas. If one really wanted to do it, one could actually do MDM2 fish analysis, and this would be characteristically amplified and would be an indi indicator that this is in fact a de-differentiated liposarcoma, but I don't think that's necessary to do in this particular case.